Hey folks, welcome back. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redmond, Nine Don Professional. We were working right along on our 60 game series in my mind. Actually, every time I say 60 games, it seems like so many, Michael. Uh, yes. But we're having, we're having fun with these and uh, it is a fascinating series uh, that we're working on. And so hoping uh, that you are enjoying them. We've been, I was just looking through uh, the comments and uh, judging by the number of views in the comments, uh, I think we're onto something. So I guess uh, we'll just take a quick, quick little breather here, Michael. How, how are you feeling about things? I know you've been you've been very assiduous about responding to the comments. I um, I wouldn't say so. I, I enjoy looking at the comments, and I um, I answer some of them. Stephen okay. has helped a lot of it. Ah, uh, so that's great. All right, thank you, Stephen. All right, big thumbs up to Stephen. Appreciate that. All right, we have another new player for today's game. What can you tell us about that person? Uh, okay, today's player is Kang dong -yu. He's a Korean player. Uh, he was born in Seoul um, in eight, 1989. So that's, um, he's in his late 20s. So one of the older players. He is a two-time world champion. And one of those wins was in 2016. So he's a kind of a fresh um, world champion at the time of this game. Mm-hmm. Okay. So one of the top players of Korea. And so can we get into it now? I think so. And we're seeing AlphaGo is black, um, playing three, four points again. Oh, a split Fuseki here. Yes. So this is, again, like it was playing a star point and a three, four point. And then it played uh, two parallel three, four points. Now it's playing them on opposite, on the, on the diagonals. And it's a fairly common opening. Yeah, wow. Um, and AlphaGo kicks. Like, this is a position where um, people used to play some kind of a pincer like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then um, people like to play this. But then at a certain point, some people were saying that it was giving white too much territory when white does this. Actually, this is something that can still be played and something that AlphaGo could have played, like something, for instance, like this would be um, an AlphaGo light move. But it didn't play that way in this game, it just kicks here. And with this move, the idea is that if white plays some kind of extension to the side, then white, black's gonna press next. And it's gonna, if black, white then crawls, it's gonna be a very low position. So it's gonna start to look actually quite similar to some games that Dosaku played where he would play this Joseki and his opponent would become over-concentrated with something like this. Uh, this is a pattern you see in Hoinbo Dosaku's games. That's 300 years ago, but he did have similar ideas in regards to this Joseki on the upper left, where Black plays the pressing move here. So there's that, but AlphaGo just kicks in place here, and White plays this way. The other option for White would just to be playing something to stop Black from pressing in the upper left corner, mm -hmm. and then Black would be play playing some kind of a pincer here. And that's why black is playing high here, so that when black pincers, there's going to be more pressure on the two white stones. <coughs> there is a variation that sort of bothers me, which is what happens if white plays here. Oh, that and looks you have to be careful of this one. Like it's it's relatively simple if black backs off and plays something like this, although there is some Aji associated with that. So the question uh, comes when what happens if black plays strongly like this. And then it's gonna be pretty complicated actually. It's, it's not really clear, but like for instance, this kind of thing could happen. And if black plays the Hana here, this is probably pretty good for white because white's gonna live in on the side and black is gonna have to play two moves in the corner to make a life. And white also has a ladder breaking move later. Um, so I, I'm, I'm you know, I could go on for a while about this, actually. <laughs> but um, I'll suffice to say that it is a fairly dangerous variation when white does this. Um, and stuff like this happens. Locally, white's not going to be able to live, but black also has to do something here. And there's the, there's the problem of this variation. It gets really exciting. And I'll go into more detail in the book, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's something that I'd be willing to experiment with, but um, it's, it's very dangerous for both players. In the game, White simply played a pincer here, 
and white is aiming at that in the near future. So trying to put pressure on black, trying to induce black to play some kind of a submissive move like this. Yeah. Obviously not for AlphaGo. So um, in the game now, white will play this forcing move in the corner and play this attachment here. So what do you think about this Tessiji here? Oof, man, all, all of this looks complicated. Yes, exactly. OK, um, now it turns out this was probably not such a good move, although it's the safe move here. Mm. And it would have been better for white to simply push through and cut. Oh, wow. Huh. Yeah, I was, I was sort of asking you a trick question there when I asked you what you thought of it. It is the good looking move that white played, but this simple cut here, and if white can capture this one black stone, white will have a strong position on the upper side and will be able to attack in that area. So this should that should be good. Black's strongest move is to run out with the one stone, and white extends here. After this, white will have um, this attachment here. So this would be a, will be a real threat. And if black answers underneath, then white can move out here. This is actually um, not so bad for white. This, this would have been perfectly OK for white. And so this is how white should have played. In the game, white um, forces with this move and then plays here. It's going to be sort of a, interesting to see how quickly this becomes difficult for white, because this was his first mistake. And black plays here. So um, this was, you know, was good. Like if black plays the other way, In this case, black does have to worry about the um, push through and cut here. So it's a bit troublesome um, when later on, uh, let's just say, say something like this happens. Later on, there's gonna, gonna be the threat of a co in the corner, uh, something like this. So, so it is a bit of a dangerous situation there. And so black has his problems too. Getting back to the game, uh, playing the honey here was a good move. And then black goes down, white pushes through. This is so complicated. Um, this is actually a point where black could have played away. And it would have, that would have been not so bad for black. At this point, uh, white's already, uh, black's already made um, some progress here. Black does have a slight advantage already mm. when black plays down here. So black could have been fine just playing something in the upper left corner. I've marked A and B as two choices. I sort of like the, the large nice move. It's just it's more exciting. Um, but of course, pressing, pressing with the nice move would be fine. But instead, AlphaGo continues to press here. Uh, white extends. And now this move is really a beautiful move here. That's gorgeous. Wow. It just wow. makes it much more effective. Like if black had simply played here, then it would have been um, probably less forceful, I think, something like this. Um, this also <laughs> looks playable for black, um, but maybe maybe playing the honey is a bit more for forceful. And white pushed through here. This was white's second mistake. So after this, actually, it's pretty bad for white. It's already 68% for black uh, when black pushes through here. Yeah, that would have to too. connect here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black will extend, and white can poke out. Um, it's it's still OK for black. I would prefer to be playing with black, but white mm -hmm. does have um, the, the cut here to look forward to. And so white does have some uh, potential to be counterattacking in this fight. So it's close to an even fight, close enough for me. In the game, white pushes through here, and black plays here. And in the game, white will cut. and this variation is just, um, just so dangerous on the upper side. Actually, it turns out white's been a bit too direct in fighting here. And maybe it would have been better for white just to take the ladder. Oh, really? Like, if white would, the side that white really wants to cut is this side. But if white does it now, it's, it's, white's going to be captured in the ladder. 
So that's the problem that White's faced with. This would just be too, too bad in the center of the board. That's why White cut from the other side, which is stopping Black from taking the ladder. But this is the side that White really wants to cut. So if White plays here, Black's going to back off in this direction. It means that in this case, White doesn't have to cut anymore and could make Sabaki, could make a, um, would, White would have more room to maneuver on the upper side in this case. So this is just an example of what might happen. This would be relatively good for White compared to the game. White would be sacrificing a lot of stones in the upper right, but would you be getting something back in, in, on the upper side? And White does have this attachment here that would connect up to the, the three stones, these three stones. So um, it's not as if everything is killed. Right. So this would have been a lot better if White had just avoided cutting. Because obviously, if you look at this variation, there's no point in cutting at this point. So if White had played, um, just go back a few moves. If White had played this move, then Black would have to play here. It would be relatively uh, easy for White. Like if Black covers on this side, White cuts. If Black covers on this side, White cuts anyway. In, in this case, White would be sacrificing again, something like this. So White just has, has to play lightly in that area. White is getting something back on, on this side. White's going to get a nice position on the right side of the board. In the game, White cut. And so like it's just heating the whole fight up so much. And the upper side is in trouble. Yeah. So at this point, it's something like 70% for Black already. It's hard to see how White um, bails out of this at this point, right? Yes, well, like, um, there's no reasonable way to play. Like, if White plays here, uh, White can probably live inside there. But White, um, White's not alive yet. Like, it, if White just leaves it, then Black can kill with this sequence. So it's not alive yet. Mm. So if White continues there, in that case, White has trouble with this side. So it's, it's this this fight looks really dangerous for White. Really, um, with Black having Black has a forcing move here, which is still threatening to kill White on the upper side. A lot of trouble on all sides. It's, it's a very difficult fight for White, I'd say. Mm -hmm. So White just took here, but in this case, it's going to be that much more difficult to live on the side. Like White played here and Black played here. At this point, those five stones are captured. And you can see that compared to that other variation where white did not cut at this point, the, the way black has captured this is just very efficient. It's a, it's a nice territory there. And white's not getting very much with just the one stone on the upper side. For instance, the, the fun variation is if white plays here, of course, in which case it's going to be a ladder. <laughs> so, so white plays away, black plays here. A small Samari, I think when you see AlphaGo playing the small Samari, usually you will think that like it's already got the game. Yeah. Yeah. Just Actually, wrapping, it's wrapping it up. The game also, but it, it does, I think it's just because Black's ahead in this case. Uh -huh. and, and so after this, AlphaGo just takes it away. It, it's not even going to try to invade this area. It's going to give White the whole area here, but Black has enough territory in other places. So Black's just going to play very simply now. That position, that shape in the upper right there is just, it's just so bad that White really doesn't have, White's almost 15 points behind on the, uh, before coming. So that's, that's a big difference. And this is just such a great lesson, especially, I mean, for everybody, but particularly for amateurs watching, uh, the way that AlphaGo just wraps up games uh, and your point about the small Shamari is, is really important, I think, for folks to pay attention to, because what I often see is that, you know, folks will get, a, you know, an advantage in the in, in an opening, you know, some sort of mistake made or whatever. Uh, and, and then maybe they're feeling a little overconfident or, you know, just want to continue to play the absolute best move, which, you know, um, that's probably not a terrible idea. Um, I think that's a good idea, actually. Um, there's two sides to this, really, because um, when AlphaGo does this, you're pretty sure it's going to work. But when a human um, tightens up and play, tries to play safely at this point in the game, Probably quite not. often it's not going to work. So, like, if, um, for instance, AlphaGo um, 
I've noticed that AlphaGo does tend to like big CMRs, like in this case, I think it would be the largest Knights move. Sure. Um, and when I see AlphaGo play the small Knights move, I do get the feeling that AlphaGo is already um, just um, simplifying, you might say, or sure. um, avoiding the more complicated possibilities of white invading that corner territory. Um, but I'm, I wouldn't really advise it to all human players. Like I, I think personally, I feel like I do better if I try to play the best moves. So there's, yeah, it's, it's hard to say. Either, uh, lots of options, lots of options. So human players. Oh man, that upper right stuff, very, very complicated, very complicated. Good stuff. Thank you, Michael, as always. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Stay with us. See you next game.